Hey everyone, I just spent a lot of time testing water blocks on the Z890 platform. Now, why did I do this? Aside from trying to figure out which water blocks of mine perform the best on the new processors, I also wanted to know um, why, if, if any, I could replicate the issues I had on my Z890 Hero build. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I recently did a build, uh, which I'll put a link for, in a Lamborghini Edition 011 featuring a Z890 Hero. And in that build video, I had brought up the fact that I could not get the system to power on with the water block mounted. Uh, an issue that took multiple removals of the water block, putting it back on, trying to sort of mounting pressures, even though the same mounting pressure, eventually I got it to work consistently. However, when running, you know, uh, Cinebench, granted I am using overclock profiles, uh, I had horrific performance. Uh, worse temperatures than an AIO by like 15 degrees. So I then checked again, the mounting contact, and I noticed that it was not ideal uh, in terms of the pace distribution and so forth. So that block obviously is not performing too well. That is the BizPower Summit, uh, the latest one. Uh, it's not doing too well on 15 gen when overclocked, okay? So that got me thinking, what other water blocks do I have that I can kind of test with? So this is where we are. For those of you curious um, to why I have AIOs on the table, uh, that is also because, as I stated before, I will be testing the uh, Reusion 3 Extreme against the regular Reusion 3. And I also added another AIO to this mix, the Triax uh, Panorama, which is not on the table. But that is also an uh, Asetek solution. So I just wanted to kind of make sure that my Reusion 3, since I took it apart before, was performing up to par. Okay, so uh, let's go in a little bit and break down the testing platform. Before we get in too far, I just want to quickly talk about the chip. Uh, this chip is convex, okay? It's not flat. Uh, like many Intel chips recently, they are convex. Um, now, according to the recently released um, contact frame from Thermal Grizzly, which I don't have, uh, I think they just offered it recently, it states that the stock ILM asserts pressure onto the IHS, making it concave. Now, um, kind of by that thinking, maybe a con slightly convex water block would perform better than a flat one, right? Um, which I kind of found to be true, kind of not, right? <laughs> but <laughs> that is what it is. Uh, additionally, for those that don't know, I'm gonna put a photo up. The ILM on the Z890 boards uh, at least on the ASUS boards I have, they have a washer added. Um, it's kind of like this flat surface that's kind of just on the other side of the ILM. So it's kind of like duplicating the washer mod that we used to do on Z790, Z690. Uh, so that, I feel, kind of complicates things a little bit. Uh, why do I say that? Uh, remember when I just told you guys about not being able to start the, uh, start the motherboard when I mounted a water block? Well, I had more issues than that. Uh, in terms of starting, I was able to replicate it with this Bispkey uh, Grazon uh, water block. Uh, it, I either couldn't start the board, or if I started the board, I couldn't run memory higher than the default 6400. And, um, or sometimes it would just fail training nonstop and then just power off. So I had, I had all this funny stuff going on. Um, that issue also presented itself when I was using the uh, heavy backplate for the Heat Killer 4 Pro. Um, because the ILM already kind of had a washer mod on it, I thought maybe I didn't need the washers that came with the heavy backplate. Uh, eventually, I actually found out I still need to. Otherwise, I couldn't pass RAM training for anything higher than 6400. So, yeah. And then for the blocks like the EK Velocity V2, uh, 1700, I did not have any issues um, right away. I, didn't ha I also tested uh, the TT Pacific SW1 Plus reason why I tested this is because most of the TT blocks have the same internals and same cold plate. So testing one is like testing multiple. And uh, I didn't have any issues with this block getting it to poor post either. Uh, I also did something interesting. Um, I used this block on the heavy back plate for the heat killer to see if I would get better temperatures. And sure enough, I actually did uh, by a little bit. And to kind of also round things out, I tried last generation's... Um, not the latest Summit, but this is the Summit M Pro. This came out about two years ago. Uh, this 
um, performed better than the current one, but not so good either. And then I also decided to throw in the older Bits Power Block, which was so bad, just, you know, thermal throttling to like no tomorrow that I'd even include it at the end. And to kind of get an idea of if my open loop was performing as expected, I added a Reusion Water Block. Now, what is the Reusion Water Block? For those of you that don't know, ROG released this recently, about a couple months ago. It is essentially the Reusion 3 AIO without a pump. So it has the same water block, uh, I mean, cold plate base and just G14 ports instead of AIO tubes. So I also tested this. Now, for those of you uh, that are interested in how my closed loop is working, I will tell you that right now. This is the Singularity Computers Arterial 2 uh, in 240, dual 240 millimeter format. Um, I have a 40 millimeter 240 on each side. I have a set of fans uh, essentially doing pull on both sides. So both air is coming in from the outside and exhausting to the top and the back. Uh, the back is open. Um, I'm a little bit conflicted about this uh, box because while it's well designed and it's cool, it's compact, uh, it does have kind of um, performance wise, it's a little bit iffy. Uh, it comes with these filters that you screw on on both sides. Uh, remove the filters, guys. Uh, taking the filter off on both sides um, decrease my water temp under load by five degrees. That's huge. Okay. So don't use the filters, uh, to kind of regulate all of this. I was running everything with an aqua computer Octo. So when I, when you guys see the fast throughs of the Cinebench with the aqua suite up, you're going to see the water temperature, the pump speed and the fan speed as well as, you know, per core temperature. So that is the loop. So you can see right here, I still have DDCs. I mean, sorry, quick disconnects connected to this block right here. So before we get started, I just want to make it extremely clear. I am running the ASUS AIOC profile. It is not manual OC, but from what I can tell, pretty much all the clocks are boosting the same for every run. Now, if you're running stock, you're going to get a lot of better temperatures than these. But I think if you're water cooling, buying a high-end uh, motherboard, buying this chip, uh, buying a high-end AIO, you're not going to spend time running stock settings. Additionally, don't trust the CPU package draw number on HWinfo. Reason I say that is because this board also does draw power for the CPU from the 24 pin. Looking at my power supply, which has a readout of you know, the power draw, it's about 120 idle and under load it's about 420 to 430. So somewhere in between there is probably the, the draw for the actual CPU. So here we're looking at the average temperature of the Reusion 3 versus the Reusion 3 Extreme. Uh, after these slides, you guys will see the actual Cinebench run. A uh, quick note about the run with the 3 and the 3 Extreme AIOs. I was running a slightly different memory profile, so you will see the CV scores be a little bit higher uh, for, for these two AIO tests. Uh, but as you can see, the average um, temperature between the Reusion 3 and Reusion 3 Extreme is fairly similar, with the Extreme actually pulling a little bit of a higher temperature. Now, when it comes to the max temperature, you'll notice that the Reusion 3 Extreme actually has a kind of a lower max temperature. Um, but if you're going to ask me, is it really worth upgrading if you already have the Reusion 3? Uh, the answer is no. Um, obviously, uh, it really comes down to if you want that screen upgrade or you want the lower fan noise profile, uh, the fans on the 3 Extreme are 30 millimeters and they are not as whiny, I guess is the best way to describe it, as the ones on the 3. Additionally, I found that long, running them at lower speeds is less noisy than the 3, uh, even if they're running at the same speeds. Obviously, temperature-wise, they're pretty much... A starting with the open loop results, I'm starting off with the Reusion wa water block. Uh, for all of the following tests with the blocks, you will see that they are going to be run at 21 degrees, approximately water temp start. And over the completion of the Cinebench run, it's going to usually end up around 26 to 27 degrees. So five to six degree delta. Uh, all the pump is running at full speed the entire time. And so are the fans. I set them to run full speed because I figured for most folks, they would probably set their fan curve to run at 100% when the system is under full load, unless they have a giant loop.
This is going to be the HK4 Pro, uh, heavy meaning the heavy backplate kit. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, there's an available heavy backplate for the LGA 1700 socket. I am using it in conjunction with the block. And even though there is, as I mentioned prior, there is somewhat of a washer underneath the new IOMs, you will still need to use the washers in my experience to not have XMP or overclock memory issues. Uh, without using the washers provided in the kit, I was not able to successfully post memory faster than 6400. I actually decided to do a little bit different. Aside from testing the TT block on its own, I also decided to reuse the heat killer uh, heavy backplate. Since the mounting mechanism is somewhat compatible with the TT block, I decided to give it a try. However, I did run into the issue that using the heavy backplate and the TT block, I could not post with memory faster than 6400. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier about the socket being kind of finicky when water cooling. Interestingly enough, with the heavy backplate from water cool, I was actually able to get better temperatures. So here's the final slide. Uh, this slide has the overall package temp, max and average of all the blocks I tested. Obviously, there could be more blocks I could have tested. Uh, I did show you guys the Grazon Bisky uh, in the beginning. Unfortunately, that block, I could not even get the system to post half the time. And I could not even get the system to start up sometimes. So I was able to recreate that issue I had with the Hero. Um, it wasn't a shorting issue. Uh, it was just, I, I really don't know. It seems like it's very finicky with mounting pressure. Uh, it didn't seem to have an issue with the AIOs. Uh, the Tri-X performed the same as the Region 3. I just had to use it just to make sure that my Region 3 functioned as it should have because I've taken it apart before. But with that said, uh, if you're going to water cool this platform, uh, I, I would suggest you wait for manufacturers to come out with an updated block or updated cold plate. As you can see, they're not exactly beating the AIOs by much. Okay. Um, additionally, well, outside of the heat killer and the reason, they're, you know, they're pretty close. Uh, but definitely expect some issues. Uh, I don't think this is a SUS board specific because I believe the other boards also have that IOM uh, washer at the bottom. Um, so I can't really pin it down to what exactly is causing it. I've, like I've said before, I've played with the mounting pressure. That doesn't seem to be it. Um, it just sometimes just either will give you memory issues or just won't power on. So with that said, I know the chip is very new. I know the platform is very new. Not a lot of people have it in their hands and reviewers who are reviewing these chips most likely just install the cooler once. And once it starts, they never really have to deal with it again. And they tend to use AIOs or air coolers. They don't tend to go through a slew of water blocks. All right. So with that said, uh, please test the block fully booting up and everything running as it should outside before you finish your loop inside. Because the last thing you need is for it to not work when you have your full loop filled. Uh, so with that said, thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.